What is up YouTube, XCX Solutions here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn your old PC into a home lab server. Now, you're probably wondering what the hell is a home lab server. It's pretty much a server that sits in your house somewhere and basically is a server for whatever you need it for. So in this video, I'm going to be using Unraid. You can use free alternatives like Proxmox. However, I love Unraid. I've paid for it. You don't have to pay for it. You can try it out for a month and see how you like it. Or you can use Proxmox. It's pretty much the same scenario. So the hardware requirements for this are a USB flash drive, minimum two gig in size, and a PC that has at least four gig of RAM, and pretty much any processor should be fine. I'm using a really, really old HP all-in-one computer. So it has the screen and the computer built in, and it's ancient as hell. So the first thing we're going to do is download the Unraid USB Creator. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can go ahead and install that. It's a portable executable, so double click on it. Make sure you've got your USB plugged in and I'd recommend selecting the version as stable, choosing the latest Unraid version, click on customize and change the server name to whatever you want. You don't have to, by default it's set as tower. And here, if you want to change your static IP, so you can basically set it here. I do this later on and I basically just change it later. You don't need to change it if you don't want to. Go ahead and click write image and this should take a couple of minutes because it actually downloads the image as well as installs it to the USB. As you can see, I am booting up the computer with the memory stick installed. I'm going into the BIOS by spamming the delete key. It might be different for you. I'm going in here and turning virtualization technology on. So if you have something similar, make sure you enable that. And all we're going to want to do is set the boot priority as your USB stick because Unraid boots from the USB. As you can see, I've rebooted and you'll get a screen that looks like this. You don't have to hit enter. You can let it do its thing and it should, if you've done it correctly, boot into a screen full of text loading that looks like the bloody matrix. Once it's finished, you can see that we have tower login and then a IP address. Now, if you don't know what the IP address is, I recommend downloading a free app on the Play Store. I think it's available for iOS as well called Thing Network Tools. Open it, connect to your network, and you can see all of the devices and their IP addresses connected to your network. As easy as that, it's very, very easy to use. You scan the network and it will basically come up QuickTime. However, if you don't have an Android phone or an iOS phone, you can go ahead and open command prompt, type in IP config, find your default gateway, which is your router login, go to your favorite web browser, Go to your browser and type in the gateway and then log in. Now, if you don't have access to this, then you might have to look for an alternative. But all we're looking for is the IP address of the server. So as you can see here, mine is 50.21. I type it in and we are prompted with the Unraid login screen. So from here, we're going to click on get trial key. This will get us the one month trial. So you can basically have full advantage of the full software of Unraid. And there we go. We have 30 days and you can see we are straight into the array devices. Now this will be totally up to you what you do with this. For this video, I've got one SSD drive. I don't have any other drives connected. So I'm just going to be using disk one as the, um, basically as the volume, but you can choose parity, uh, have them in different arrays and stuff like that. So as you can see here, sorry, it's a one terabyte hard drive, not an SSD. I choose pool one and you can also select as many drives as you want. So if you have multiple drives, you can select them here. You can see on the right hand side, the temperature is at 31 degrees C, which is pretty cool so once you've selected your drives as you can see here disk one is my high touchy one terabyte hard drive which i believe is three and a half inch it's quite an old hard drive once you've selected that we're going to go ahead and click on start this will basically load the array and after that it will scan it briefly you'll be asked to format the drive if it's not in the correct format now it's most likely not and i'd recommend formatting it anyway so if you scroll down you can see format unmountable disks yes I want to do this and then we're going to hit format it will say formatting and then once that's done it will allow you to proceed to the rest of Unraid 
So now it says stop check history. So that's how you know that the drive is running. It's in green on the left hand side. And now we can click on users and you can change the username from root to whatever you like. I clicked on this because I highly recommend changing the password straight away as it's not set. So be sure to set a secure password, not a stupid one, just in case people are on your network and they can, you know, fuck around with your server. So from here, I went into display settings and changed the dash to be black under dynamic color theme because the white is just absolutely too bright for my eyes and you know dark just looks better from here i'm just going to date and time and you can obviously change that to whatever your date and time is set to heading over to shares i briefly just show you my existing server that i have that's hidden away in my wardrobe and you can see i have the network drives that are mapped here so i have a 20 terabyte hard drive that's in an array and basically you can see that the new server has popped up there's nothing in there yet. That's because we don't have the shares set up correctly. So if you go into share settings, scroll down, and I'm just going to basically choose the app data to be public and case sensitive names to be auto and export to be yes. Now, if I click apply, go over to Windows, you can now see that the app data folder from the server is accessible from other computers connected to the network. So I'm just showing you here that you can read and write inside of that folder and you can make a new share. So I I just made a new share called test folder. I then went down and included all of the disks. Again, this is just trial and error. You can basically choose whatever you want. It's all personal preference. Clicked on add share and then went down again and made sure this was all public and set to yes. Now, if you do want this hidden or if you do want this password protected, you can do so as well. However, it's just me pretty much and some other people on the network. So I'm not too fussed about that. So I went ahead and hit refresh. And as you can see, the test folder is there. I create a new folder inside test folder and I map the network drive to the file explorer. So now I can go back and I can have that permanently there and drag things in and out and basically have access to it wherever I am in the house, whether that may be on a MacBook, on my phone or anything like that. It's just great because if you don't have hard drives, you know, and you just want to throw stuff on the server that's always running in the background, then it's really, really good for storage. That's pretty much it for part one on how to build your own home lab using an old PC. I will continue this episode and basically show you the really cool things you can do with Unraid. This is just a really quick video to set you up. So I hope you've enjoyed. Comment, rate, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.